Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about running PowerShell scripts. There's going to be three different methods we're going to cover. Number one, simple, easy, just run it from the PowerShell CLI. Number two, just right click on that script and hit run with PowerShell. And then number three, we're going to go through the steps of setting up a scheduled task and have it run on an automated schedule. Basically, every Friday morning, let's run that report. So without further ado, let's hit the shell. All right, so the first thing we're going to be going over is execution policies. So if we do get execution policy, you can see what one's currently set with your PowerShell session. Right now, ours is set to unrestricted. Now, if we wanted to set our execution policy, we could do that with the set execution policy commandlet. And then we specify what policy we'd like to use, like all signed, bypass, default, and the others. Right now, for demo purposes, we're going to use unrestricted. Definitely don't recommend doing this. I would prefer signed. But for our demo, we're just going to do unrestricted. And we're going to just set it for the current user. So we'll go ahead and run this. We'll say yes to all. And then when we go ahead and say get execution policy, we'll see that that's set to unrestricted. So the first way we're going to run a script is I'm going to move into the directory where my scripts are at. It's CD. And then we're going to go ahead and run the disabled users report script. This script basically pulls the disabled users from Active Directory, creates a spreadsheet. If you haven't seen it yet, this is actually the report we write for the Excel spreadsheet creation video. So we'll go ahead and grab the name. And the way you execute a script is pretty straightforward in PowerShell. You just do a dot, a backslash, and your PS1 script name. If, it's, if you're not in the current directory, then you would specify the full path to the directory. So we'll go ahead and delete our reports that we already have in our directory, just so we can see the new ones get created. So we'll delete those. And then we'll go ahead and kick off the script by just pressing enter in our PowerShell window. And this is basically going to run that report, which again, will authenticate the Active Directory and pull all those disabled users down and then save it to an Excel file within our reports directory. So that's method one. Method two is pretty straightforward as well. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Windows Explorer. We're going to go where that PowerShell script is. And all you have to do is right click on it and hit run with PowerShell. Now, based on your execution policies, you may be prompted to approve or, you know, say, yes, I, I want to run this script. Since we just changed execution policies today, most likely we'll get prompted for this, which we do. And we just say yes. But typically, if your policy is already set, you won't have this issue. So we'll go ahead and say yes to all. And as you can see, the script kicks off and our report's being ran. So this is the second method of running scripts. So our third method for running scripts is with task scheduler. And this will allow us to run a script on a scheduled basis. So let's say every Friday at 8 a.m. we want to run our report and it emails out to leadership, right? So the way you do this is first you want a service account and this service account is going to need access to query active directory and this is an account that's going to run this script the next step is you need to give this account access to run scripts on your server in question so basically how you would do that or check that is you would go to start and you would look at the local security policies on your server so you search sec poll and then you'll see local security policies and then once you get into the local security policies, you'll open up the local policies, you'll open up user rights assignments, and then you'll see log on as batch job. Now, when you open this up, you typically will add the user in. My screen might look a little bit different, and that's because I'm running on a domain controller. And so domain controllers have extra security around them where you can't actually do this through the, the window. And so I actually have this set in group policy just for demo purposes so you can see this. So we can see here that PowerShell task, our service account, is part of the logon as batch job. So that basically gives this account access to run it on a server. And again, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a domain controller, but on any server, it's totally fine. So next thing, we're going to open up task manager, and so our task scheduler. And so once we open this up, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder. And this folder is basically where all of our tasks are going to be living when we're running our scripts. And basically, I do this so I know exactly where all my scripts are for the task. So we'll go ahead and go into the task schedule library. We'll right click on that and we're going to create new folder and we'll just call it scripts. 
And now that that's created, if you left click on it, you can see in the middle pane that there's nothing there. This is where we're gonna create our task. So basically you'll right click, you'll hit create new task. All right, on the create task window, first we gotta give our task a name. We're gonna do disabled users report, something descriptive that makes sense. We also have a description box where you can put more information about the script, who wrote it, maybe where the repo is, where the script lives, just so someone knows when they come in behind this. Next thing is running the user. So if we want to run whether the user is logged in or not, obviously our user isn't going to be logged in because this is going to be on a scheduled basis. So we'll want to use run whether or not logged in. For this purpose, since we are logged in, I'm going to keep that one checked. And you can see the task is going to be run as automation slash PowerShell task, which is our service account and active directory. Again, remember, this is just for demo purposes and we're currently logged in. But for you, you would want to do run whether user is logged in or not. And that's going to work for you. Next, we're going to create our triggers. So first things first, you want to click new. And this is where we set the schedule up. And so there's multiple options here. You can play with them. We're going to do on a schedule. We're going to say on a weekly basis. We're going to say on Fridays. We're going to set our time. This is basically, you know, we want it to run. We'll say 8 in the morning. We want this report to run at 8 in the morning on every Friday. And then obviously there's more settings around if you want a delay and all those other things. This should be good enough for our setup. So we'll hit OK. Next is the actions. What's going to happen at 8 a.m. on Friday? This is where we're going to say start a program and we're going to navigate to the PowerShell executable. So we'll go into System32, Windows PowerShell, version 1.0, and click PowerShell EXE. So that's basically going to say start this program. The arguments, first one we're going to do is the execution policy. And this is just in case you don't have an execution policy set or anything like that. Here, we're going to set this execution policy to just bypass for now. Again, demo purposes, there's better practices, especially if it's signed and stuff like that. And then we'll do dash file, and we're going to specify our file name. So we'll go ahead and put our file name in there. And that's going to be the full path to our file, so it knows where to start. And basically go back through, make sure there's no spaces, hit OK. And then our conditions, this is where you can set other settings, nothing really useful for us on this case. And then we can use allow task run on demand, stop after three days of running, and so on and so forth. So that's going to basically fix any issues that you might have. Again, we're going to go in, back in, and select that user. So we'll go ahead and search PowerShell task. We'll hit OK. And then now we see it's there. We'll hit OK again. Uh, this is that run whether user is logged on or not, like I talked about before. And then we'll hit OK. Again, it's not prompting me for credentials because I'm already logged in as this user. But if you're setting up for another account, it would ask you to put a password in. So we'll go ahead and hit run task. And we can see that this task is going to kick off our report. And then we'll go in the reports directory. And you're going to see that CSV or the Excel file get created. So that's basically all the steps that you take to run a report on a scheduled basis. I know there's not a lot of content out there, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.